Hey everybody, DIY Dad here, and what follows is a video that I shot, uh, perhaps in an ill-advised way, in a campground. So uh, what I'm gonna take you through is the install of a CarmTech 10-digit keypad lock onto a camper trailer. This is gonna be on my Keystone Cougar. It'll work on pretty much any modern RV and some of your, uh, your older units as well. They're pretty universal. But I did this in a campground. Now the positive to that is it does show that you can do this on the fly with all sorts of chaos around you. The negative is the audio suffers for it a little bit. So I'm gonna apologize in advance uh, for the amount of background noise that I'm about to subject you all to. Sorry, it's worth it. I love the upgrade. The door closes much nicer and much more solidly than it used to. I'll take you through step-by-step -step how to do it. It takes a Phillips head screwdriver, nothing else. So anybody can do this. Well worth it, not cheap, but definitely worth it. Here we go, sorry about it. So this is the lock we're going to install. It's the 10 digit version of the lock from uh, CarmTech. And when you purchase this, uh, essentially the way that they set this, uh, there's a couple different versions of it and you want to look at the existing lock that you have and make sure that your lock is pictured in the ones it can replace, otherwise you need to get the other option that works for this style instead. Mine lines up with this, so we're good to go. Okay, your first step is going to be to remove the existing lock. So you're going to pull the four screws here, two screws on the end, you should be able to take this, kind of hinge it out and get it out of the way. Uh, and that'll pull that whole thing free, this piece will kind of fall off that direction. Inner handle is released, so we'll pull these two on the end, pull the strike plate off. Once these two screws are released, this plate will come off and then this whole assembly will come free from the back side of the door. So with the door fully released then we can check our final measurements just to make sure this is right. So it's a standard door, so an inch and a half, I believe, thick, and then uh, two and three quarters wide by three and three quarters tall. If that's the size of your opening, this is going to fit directly in. So this lock assembly ships then as one unit. So before you can install it, you're gonna to have to take it apart. So we're gonna flip it over, and we're gonna remove these four screws to separate the back panel from the front. The install then is gonna be essentially reverse of uh, the way you took it apart. So this piece is gonna go in from the outside of the door, and then you're going to attach it with this strike plate using the two shorter screws that you have here. These longer kind of uh, self-tapping screws will be needed with that plate into the door frame. So pretty simply, I take this and I'm gonna thread it through like this. And we'll need two hands to do this, but get it positioned, uh, run the cables through ahead of time so that those are all cleared. And then once it's in position, you can use the strike plate to hold everything in place. So installed then we should look like this. Got the outer panel in place. We've got the two wires threaded through. We have our door striker plate attached. And at that point, we can move over to the other assembly and we get the batteries installed. So, around this piece, you want to cut this cable tie uh, to release the keys here. And then we're going to pull these two screws and install four AA batteries, which are included in the set, uh, to the back of the handle here. Batteries in place, we'll pop this cover back on. The battery installed, we can now connect this wire to the wire coming from the front. And whether this is on or not, you should hear a beep signifying that the connection has been made when these two link together. Once your connection is made and you hear the beeps, we can position this in place and we're going to use those four screws to thread this back on. Be very careful not to pinch these wires, so kind of get them positioned in the middle where they're not going to interface uh, with this handle clip and they're not gonna get in the way of the two locks. So get those bent in and kind of located in place. You're gonna screw this in then just enough uh, to hold it and then kind of align how this sits so it sits flush in the door before you tighten everything down. So I have two of the four screws in. The trickiest part about getting this aligned was getting these little cams hooked up. They could only be on a certain way. So what I did is I kind of had the, the plate pivoted this way, got the top one aligned and then held that in place, kind of spun this until the bottom one aligned, and then just sort of use that to guide the rest of this together 
making sure that my wires ended up kind of right in here so that they're not interfacing with this little latch uh, which goes to the striker at the end. Now that that's done, I can get this aligned, get it kind of straight, and then we'll tighten all of this down, get all four screws in, and we can move on to programming. Okay, now that our lock's installed, let's talk about programming. By default, your code from the factory is going to be 1234. Obviously, you want to change that because that's the kind of code an idiot would have on his luggage. Insert Spaceballs reference here. Uh, you can, however, use that initially, so 1234, and then lock or unlock would actually the lock cylinder. So if I go one, two, three, four, lock, so it's gonna lock and beep, and again. Okay. To program this, what you're going to wanna do is you have to know what the current code is, otherwise there's a reset button on the back that you can push. But if you know what the current code is, you're gonna press and hold nine, type in the current code, hit lock, type in your new code, hit lock, type in your new code again, and hit lock. And each time you hit lock, it's going to beep, and that last time to let you know it's successful, it's going to do a long beep. So I'll kind of show you that, and we'll just use a code of like four, five, six, seven. Okay. So I'm going to go nine. One, two, three, four for the default code. Four, five, six, seven, lock. Four, five, six, seven, lock. Okay. Now I'm program a four, five, six, seven. So if I were to try that again. work for me. Now obviously I'm not going to leave the code at that, but that's how you go about programming it. From the inside then, when you're inside the camper, this lock plate has two different locks on it. This one is going to actuate the deadbolt, and then this one will actually prevent the handle from opening as well. So when you're inside, if you want that extra security, you can do that. You also have the option here to change the noise of the beeps, so you can have it beep when someone's putting a code in or not. It's kind of a nice security feature to be able to hear it. You can also turn this off. Now, if you turn this off, that stops the remote piece from working. You can still use the key to lock and unlock, but it's if I'm in the camper and I don't want uh, the, the key fobs to work anymore, I can shut that off and it's just an extra bit of security. So that's going to wrap us up for this video. Have to excuse me for looking a little bit crazy because between the last segment and this one, I went swimming with my family, so stuff happened. All that being said, this is one of my favorite upgrades I've done to this camper so far. Uh, it allows us to lock our keys in the camper and keep our physical keys in the truck so we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to carry keys with us when we go out to the pool or do anything like that. We can have everything all secure here. Really cool feature. I'm looking forward to it actually in my driveway as well because I've found that when I'm running out to get something, I never remember to bring my keys the first time. I always have to go back in and grab them. So uh, really cool update, very easy to do, not cheap, but I think well worth it. So this being the end of a DIY dad video, I of course owe you a dad joke. And given the content that we've been working with here, uh, what kind of a key does a ghost use? A spooky. I might have used that one before. What kind of keys do chefs use? No key. All right. What do you call someone who can't find their keys? Unlucky. All right. With any DIY project, remember the most important step is just to do it. No one's going to see the flaws unless you point them out to them. Have a great day. Stay safe. Catch you on the next one.